Today's video is about resistivity. Now we've talked about resistors quite a bit already, and now you're gonna figure out how to find the resistance in a resistor, even if it's not in a circuit. So just by information about the resistor itself, how you could calculate its resistance, instead of having to know voltage and current to use Ohm's law to calculate its resistance. We did a little mini lab at the end of our Saturday session where hopefully this information already started kind of soaking into your brain. But resistance depends on the length and cross-sectional area of a resistor. Now cross-sectional area, remember, is if you kind of slice the object in half, the two-dimensional thing that you see left over is the cross-sectional area. So for this cylinder, the cross-sectional area would be the area of this circle. Resistivity also depends on the length of the resistor. And the way it depends should be kind of intuitive to you. The bigger the area, the more space for electrons to go through. And so resistivity is inversely related to area. The bigger the area, the smaller the resistance. However, the longer this path, the longer it will take the electrons to get through. And so resistivity is directly related to length. So the longer it is, the higher its resistance. And again, the wider its area, the not wider its area, but the bigger its area, the smaller its resistance. Each material, though, um, has a different resistance in and of itself. So like platinum of this shape and size would have a different resistance than tin of this shape and size of the cylinder here. And we call the dependence on the object resistivity. So resistance is resistivity, rho, times length over area. And here are some common resistivities. If you ever needed to know these, they would give, be given to you in some kind of table, or you'd be asked to figure them out given other information. But resistance is resistivity times length over area. And the units for resistivity are ohm meters. So ohm, it doesn't even look like an ohm, ohm meters are the units for resistivity. So make sure you understand that equation, that resistance depends on length and area and resistivity. Resistivity times length over cross-sectional area. So now let's try an example. By what factor does a wire's resistance change if the length is doubled and the area is halved? Now resistance is the R. Don't get it confused with the rho for resistivity. The equation we're looking at is rho length over area. And so here, rho is resistivity, whereas back with fluids, rho was density. We use them twice, kind of like V for voltage and V for velocity. So we want to know by what factor does a wire's resistance change if length is doubled and area is halved. And then we're also going to draw both wires. So let's think about that. So if I first have a wire here, and I'm exaggerating this, no, it's hard to find wires that big. We're going to double its length, so if this was its initial length, let's call that L, then I'm going to make one now that is 2L in length, 2L, and I cut the area in half. Now that's kind of hard to judge because area depends um, quadratically on radius and diameter. So you just kind of have to say, oh, that looks like about half that original area to me. Okay, so this one had A and this one had one half A. And you may be asked to actually draw wires like this, given information on the AP exam. So a little, slightly more complicated than just finding the change. All right, now, since that equation is already solved for resistance, and that's what we're asked about, let's just plug in our changes. So resistance equals rho, that didn't change. We doubled the length, so 2L over half the area. One half a. Now the thing in this equation is squared, making this a little easier. That one half on bottom gets flipped, and so we end up with r equals rho times two times two, because we have the one half. And when you have a fraction in the denominator, you flip it and multiply. So two over one, we get four l over A, and it's pretty clear to me that that equation changed by a factor of 4. So our, radi our resistance changed by a factor of 4. 
by what factor does a wire's resistance change, example two, if the length is halved and the diameter, now this question is being tricky, the diameter is doubled. Okay, first let's draw the wires. We have our original wire of some length and some cross-sectional area. So let's call this L. And since this is focusing on diameter, let's look at this as the diameter. And now it says that we cut the distance in, or the length in half, okay? And we double the diameter. So I'm going to try to do double that first one in diameter. So this is half L and 2D. Well, if you think about the equation for resistance, resistance equals resistivity times length over cross-sectional area. Diameter isn't in there, but cross-sectional area is. And the cross-sectional area of a cylinder, if I look at the top of this, that's a circle. Area of a circle, 2 pi r squared. So let's think about this. If I double the diameter, since radius is half diameter, if I double the diameter, then I've also doubled the radius. And if I double the radius, since it's squared, my area has changed by f a factor of 4. So I double the diameter. Walking through that logic again, I double the diameter, meaning I've doubled the radius, because the 1 half isn't part of the change. We're only worried about the change. So I've doubled the radius. If I double the radius, I've quadrupled the area, because area depends on radius squared. Now I'm ready to plug in the changes to that equation. Resistance equals rho. We cut the length in half. 1 half L over. We quadrupled the area. 4 A. Now since we have a fraction in the top of the fraction, the denominator just joins with the bottom. And we have resistance is rho L over 8 A. That's like saying 1 half divided by 4, and that gives you 1 eighth A. And it should be pretty clear that that resistance changed by a factor of 1 eighth. So the resistance is now a lot smaller. Doubling that diameter and therefore quadrupling the cross-sectional area change that resistance by a lot because the electrons now had more space to flow through. It's like if you get a really big straw, you can get a lot of water or soda through that straw at once. All right, that's it. Um, fairly short compared to the recent one, so if you didn't understand anything, go back and watch again. See you tomorrow. Also, there should be a quiz review video up with this one or coming soon, so make sure you watch it. Quiz on Monday.